Hello, Kangs. I'm DJ Man. And I'm Abby Cross, and welcome to Friday Morning Announcements. Before we get going with the announcements, we got a quick shelter in place video for mm -hmm. all of you to watch, and be sure to pay attention because it is a safety policy. truck pulling a trailer. State troopers believe the driver veered off the roadway, slamming into a concrete abutment, triggering the explosion. Protection Agency spokesperson says some of the gasoline from the truck spilled into Scriber Creek. And that's An emergency involving chemical agents or hazardous materials can occur anywhere at any time. Chemical agents are poisonous gases, liquids, or solids that have a toxic effect on people, animals, and plants. If released or misused, they can pose a threat to the environment or health. Chemical agents can be found in homes, schools, businesses, industries, chemical facilities, and transported across highways and rail lines. Chemical safety is a responsibility we all share. After a chemical release, Local emergency response agencies will make a decision whether to evacuate the area or have building occupants shelter in place. Local authorities will give directions over media such as TV, radio, and NOAA weather radio through the emergency alert system. Every home, school, and business should have an all-hazard NOAA weather radio with a tone alert feature to monitor the emergency alert system. If evacuation is ordered because of a chemical hazard, it is important to know the correct evacuation route to take away from your present location to a place of safety so you don't travel into the chemical. Carefully following evacuation instructions will help assure your safety in getting out of harm's way. Sometimes, however, evacuation is not possible or is not the best choice and you will be instructed to shelter in place. This is often ordered when time does not allow for an evacuation. Although shelter-in-place offers good protection from toxic materials, it is not 100% effective. The goal is to limit exposure. This video will help you with your shelter-in-place plans for schools, homes, and businesses. When a shelter-in-place order is given, quickly implement the following directions. Bring students and staff inside the building immediately. Proceed to your pre-planned area and implement your shelter-in-place procedures. Close all windows and lock all exterior doors. Shut off all ventilation systems, including all heating and air conditioning units. This is done to keep outside air that may be contaminated with hazardous chemical vapors or gases from being drawn into the school. Place a sign on the door that indicates the school or room is observing shelter-in-place procedures. Monitor the TV, battery-operated radio, or NOAA weather radio, and listen for instructions from local authorities. There are several options to choose from when considering shelter in place for schools. A large interior room prepared for sheltering, such as a multi-purpose room, individual classrooms, or using an interior hallway, preferably without vents, will be the safest place for students to shelter in place. Based on your school's hazard assessment, any one of these options is perfectly acceptable, depending on the needs of the school population. Check with your local fire department for the best location. For schools located near chemical plants and chemical storage facilities, with the ability to cover their windows and vents with plastic and duct tape, consider these preparations. Before a chemical event occurs, the students and staff will measure the windows and vents in their classroom. After measuring, they will cut plastic sheeting slightly larger than the area to be covered. The students may number the windows and vents and write that number on the corresponding sheets of plastic. They will also cut plastic to cover the electrical outlets. The plastic coverings and duct tape will store in a box labeled Shelter in Place Kit. This kit will be put with the other emergency supplies in the classrooms used for Shelter in Place. Each classroom used for Shelter in Place should have an emergency supply kit containing a battery-powered radio with extra batteries, plastic trash bags, first aid supplies, dust masks, heavy gloves, and other necessary emergency items. Regardless of the shelter-in-place method your school chooses, keep your classroom disaster kit close by to support the students and staff during an emergency. 
Do not leave the designated shelter in place area until you are told to do so. When authorities consider it safe, they will issue an all clear message over the radio and TV via the emergency alert system. Before leaving, wait for the school's all clear announcement over the school intercom system. When it is safe for you to leave school or go outside of your classroom, open the windows if possible for a clean air exchange. When sheltering in your home, follow these steps to ensure your safety. Bring pets and children inside. Close all windows and lock all exterior doors. Close heating and ventilation systems. Seal windows with plastic and duct tape. Tape around doors and vents. Have access to landline phones, as cellular equipment may not work. Remain inside. Stay tuned to your radio. Listen for the all clear. When the all clear is announced, open windows and doors for a clean air exchange. Quick action will make the difference when faced with a chemical emergency. Business shelter-in-place procedures are similar to home and school procedures. Close the business. Instruct all employees, customers, and visitors to stay inside. Shut and lock all exterior windows and exterior doors. Turn off all heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Go to a predetermined interior sheltering room or rooms. Seal any windows or vents in the sheltering room with sheets of plastic and duct tape. Seal the doors with duct tape around the top and sides. Place a wet towel at the bottom of the door. Turn on a TV or radio and listen for further instructions. Make a written record of those being sheltered. When the all clear is announced, open windows and doors, all ventilation systems, and go outside until the building's air has been exchanged with clean outdoor air. Activate the facility's emergency plan. Follow directions carefully. Wait for the all clear before leaving the facility. It is critical to develop a plan before a disaster strikes and to stick with it in times of crisis. Practice your plan during the year by scheduling drills that will familiarize everyone with all emergency procedures. It is vital to coordinate your plan. Involve your local emergency management office, law enforcement, fire and EMS personnel, your regional educational service district and others in your planning efforts. Annually review and update your plan as required. For more information on shelter in place, contact your local emergency management office, tribal authority, or local emergency planning committee. This video was developed in partnership between Washington State Emergency Management and Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction. In the event of an emergency, you could say following those rules is both necessary and proper, just like the necessary and proper clause. All right. Homeroom teachers, remember to pass out senior superlative ballots to the seniors in your homeroom. And make sure that the students, students, make sure to turn them in by the end of today. Today is the last day that the yearbook will be receiving the ballots. So turn them in to your homeroom teacher, Order Millie, in the front office. And there are also extras in the front office. And, uh, congrats to some Kang artists. We got some great ones. Uh, Ploy Hemrathran and Amanda Cardis both received the Outstanding Achievement Award for their submissions to the Puget Sound ESD Regional High School yes. Art Show. That's a, that's a lungful. My yes. diaphragm has really, really <laughs> had to Mouthful work for that one. Thank you for making us proud. All right, Kangs who emailed Kaylee Lawler to do the lip dub with the last names A through H E L. Your auditions will be Thursday morning, the fourth. Not the third. It's the, the third. third. Thursday morning, the third at seven a.m. in room three thirty. Those of you with the last names Hem or H E M <laughs> through Z, your auditions will be Friday morning at seven. Friday in the actually. Morning. Friday actually is the fourth. Friday Friday's is the fourth at 7 in the morning, also in room 330. And you can audition with one partner. If you have a friend who has already emailed uh, Kaylee to tell her, you must uh, have a stanza of your choice from the song rehearsed and ready to go with for the audition. Okay. Um, yeah.
Those are some pretty confusing <laughs> rules. So yes. uh, in case anyone was wondering, so it means audition with the song. The song is, uh, the song is Shut Up and Dance. And uh, you can have one partner. So let's say me and Abby really wanted to do the lip dub together. I'd say, hey, Abby, let's do the lip dub together. And, and then, then we'd aud say, audition together. Yeah, and we pick a part of the song that we want. And then we go to audition that part of the song. Yeah, there you in go. In room 330 at 7 AM. There you go. Yes. And That's also, that. again, all emails. You're supposed to email her by today. So by that's today, at the end Kay of school, Lawler if you want an addition. At lwsd.org. Yeah, S-K-Lawler at lwsd.org. Uh, mm -hmm. So Lawler is spelled L-A-W-L-E-R. Yes. Okay. All right, spring sports <laughs> start next Monday right after this, uh, this nice weekend. Mm -hmm. All athletics should be uh, complete and eligible. Paperwork, all that stuff needs to be turned in, turned ready. In. Turn them by today. You'd say that you want to. You'd say you want to take care of it, just like the take care clause. <laughs> yes. Bring the forms to the athletic office during lunch today. Uh, this is the time that you can turn in your paperwork. And so now we're going to tell you a little bit about the sports. That okay. So. Things. Yeah. Badminton head coach is Ashton Griffin. Practices begin right after school in the main gym. Baseball head coach Derek Bingham. Yep. Uh, meet in the baseball field dressed and ready to try out right after school mm -hmm. as a tryout sport. Yes. Boys soccer, head coach is Rod Smith. Tries to begin at 6 p.m. on the stadium field, I'm assuming also Monday. Uh, girls golf, head coach is Shane O'Brien. Meet in room 3.30 after school on February 29th. That's Monday. Mm -hmm. Girls tennis, uh, the head coach is our very own Jim Waters. Tryouts to begin at 3 p.m. on the tennis courts. Softball, head coach Tracy Tanaway. Uh, meet in the softball field dressed and ready. All right, track, the head coach is Roger Hansen, and we're going to be meeting in the movement room. Uh, that's the one right across from the weight room on Monday morning. Or There's uh, Monday afternoon, not morning. Afternoon. Monday and morning. spring sport parent meeting is on March 7th in, at 7 p.m. in the gym. So that's the Monday after the, this upcoming Monday. March 7th. Don't and forget about the college recruiting meeting. The athletic and counseling departments are joining forces to educate parents and students regarding the college athletic recruiting process. Please mark your calendars for March 16th from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the theater for a comprehensive guide to the process. Regardless of the level or division you hope to play at, if you're hoping to continue your sport in college, this evening is important for you, no matter what grade you're in. Okay, also, Automotive Enthusiasts Unite. That is an interest group, and they're meeting Wednesdays at 1 p.m., and it starts March 2nd. All right, career cruising activities are due March 1st for every grade. Log into your Haiku page and see the LWS... LWHS HS. Counseling Center, then Career Cruising to see what activities your grade has due next Tuesday. And I think that's about, that's, that's it. Uh, can that's you think of anything have. else? I cannot. I can. No. All right. A lot of information. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend, Kings. Have a great weekend.